Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. Have you accidentally imaged your darks under the category lights, or accidentally imaged your lights under the category darks, or even changed your filter name at some point and think to yourself, do I have to re-image all of this now? The good news is, is no, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn how to correct your fits header. Let's face it, we spend a lot of time between setting up, imaging, processing, and taking care of our equipment. And there's a couple of mistakes that can seem very time consuming and discouraging because it seems like we need to redo everything in order to get it corrected. And the good news is, and what I'm about to show you, these couple of mistakes that, let's face it, if you've done it long enough, uh, you've, you've made this mistake, um, and if you haven't, you eventually will because we're all human and we make mistakes. But it's okay because I'm going to show you that these couple of errors are extremely easy to fix. So let's jump in and let's take a look at what I'm talking about. If we go ahead and we open up our um, folder here, and I have YouTube example dark. So I took some dark frames for IC5070. And we hop in here and we notice, wait a minute, this says light frame. So we're in our WBPP folder. We're in our YouTube example dark folder. So let's hop into PixInsight and make sure that we have the correct thing going here. So let's navigate to that folder. We got WBPP, YouTube example dark, we got light, and let's open one of these up. And when we stretch it, we see that it is a dark frame. So what happened? More than likely what happened is uh, in the image capture software, we accidentally chose light instead of dark, but that's okay. Let's go ahead, let's hop back in here. We're in our WBPP, YouTube example dark. Let's go ahead and rename this to dark. Let's go ahead and copy that and let's put it into IC5070 HA night one and let's paste it in. And I'm just gonna show one night just for the sake of speed here. Now let's go ahead and let's go to script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. And let's go ahead and go to directory and let's navigate to IC5070 HA night one. And when we go to dark, we notice we have our dark flat, but we don't have a dark. We have our flats and under lights, we have our dark frames. And this is where the discouraging part can set in because now we think we have to retake all of those frames under the correct capture. And that's not the case. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's go ahead, let's reset this. We'll purge the cache, let's exit. And let's go into file, open, and let's navigate back to HA night one. And let's open up one of our dark frames. Now we're going to go to process all processes and we're going to go down to fits header. We're going to choose our dark frame here. And when we look, the image type was accidentally set as light. If we double click, we can go ahead and change this to dark and we're going to hit replace. Then we take the triangle, drag and drop onto the image and that'll change the fits header data for the image because that is exactly where the issue lies. As you can see, this was embedded in the fits header metadata as a light frame and we're gonna change it to a dark frame so that then WBPP recognizes it as a dark frame and will assign it to the correct location. Now this can take a long time to fix all of your dark frames. 
The good news is, is if we go onto the workspace, we right click, go to image container, click on this little folder icon, and let's navigate back to our trouble files here. Uh, we're gonna actually work it off of where we got the dark frames from. I'm gonna show you why. Let's double click and we're gonna highlight all of our frames. We're gonna hit open. That's gonna put all of our frames that we need to correct into here. Output directory, we're gonna click the folder. Let's navigate back over. YouTube example dark. And we're gonna actually put a new folder, corrected dark. Highlight the folder, hit select, triangle, drag and drop onto the workspace. And now we can exit out of our image container. From here, since we already double clicked on image type, value we set to dark, hit replace, triangle, drag and drop onto the image container that we pulled out onto the workspace and notice how it's a check mark. Outside, it's just a plus sign. Here, it's a check mark. Release it and PixInsight is going to change the FITS header information from light to dark on all of our dark frames that we put into the image container down here. So we don't have to do it one at a time. We'll let PixInsight do all of them for us in one easy go. And it's, uh, as you can see, uh, didn't take that long at all. So we're gonna go ahead and um, exit out of everything here. And then we're gonna go back into our folder here. We'll go into our uh, WBPP, YouTube example dark, corrected dark, and all of our new corrected darks are in here. Let's go ahead and rename this to bad dark. We're gonna go ahead and rename this to dark so we don't get confused. Let's copy our dark folder. And then what we're gonna do is go back into our IC5070 HA night one. Let's delete this dark folder that has the bad dark frames and paste in our newly corrected dark frames. Now the reason that I did it the way I did it is because if you have multiple nights as you see here, as well as multiple filters, it's easy to have the um, dark folder, the corrected dark folder in a common location where you can just copy and paste it because remember, dark frames can be reused, so you can add that to your dark library. If you're using a cooled camera and can control the, um, the uh, items that need to be controlled in order for them to be reused. And I have a whole video going over dark frames, what they're used for, and how to build a dark library. So make sure to check that out um, if you're curious about it. Now, let's go back into PixInsight. Let's go back into script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. And now everything is reset because we did that before we exited out. Let's go into directory. Let's navigate back over to our IC5070 HA night one. We have all of our items, dark, dark, flat, flat, and light. So we'll highlight night one, hit select folder. And from here, our dark frames are now listed correctly and in the correct category. Of course, we have our flats and then our lights just contain our HA light frames. Now there's one more thing that I wanna show you, and this is probably gonna be more common than the previous example. What I mean by that, let me show you. Let's go to script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to directory, 
we're going to go to this PC and we're going to navigate to, in this case, M101. And I'm going to load the entire data set because there's something I want to show you here. So we're going to click on OK. And when we go to our darks, we see that we have our darks and we have our flat darks. When we go to flats, we see that with mono, WBPP categorizes everything by filter. Now, this is where this will be more common than the previous example. If you're adding data to a data set from previous years, Sometimes things change, you know, you'll change your filter names and, and that can cause this issue that you see here. Everything looks good, L, R, G, B, but what's this one? In my case, my first night imaging mono, I had my filters named one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And then after the first night, I realized, hey, wait a minute, what am I doing? It'll be easier if I name them for what they are, L, R, G, B, H, A, O, three, S, two. Well, this is what got me into this issue, is I have my luminance from night one in filter designation one, and then everything after that is filter designation L. And the good thing is, is that everything in filter designation one is still categorized as a flat frame, and we can see that here. However, the bad news is, everything under filter designation one will be pre-processed separately from filter designation L and separate master files will be generated. And we don't want that. Since filter one is luminance, just like filter L, we want everything under filter one to be pre-processed together and a master file generated together. The fortunate part is, is that this is also very easy to correct. So let's go to reset and then we'll close out of WBPP. And we're gonna go ahead and open up one of our luminance flat frames in question. So we'll go to luminance night one, flat, and we have our flat frame. Now, just like before, we're gonna to go to process, all processes, we're gonna to go to fix header. We're gonna choose our flat frame and we're gonna scroll down to filter. As we can see here, filter designation one. Double click, and then under value, we're gonna go ahead and change the value to what we need. In this case, from one to L. We're gonna hit replace. Right click on the workspace, image container, and then we're gonna click our little folder, and here we see M101, luminance night one, flat, so these are the correct flat frames, highlight all, click open, output directory, click the little folder, and then I'm just going to put my output directory in a common area here. So I'm going to type in corrected lum flat. create a new folder, and I'm gonna put flat. And I'm gonna choose that folder as the output. So now that we have our luminance image selected, our filter designation set to L, hit replace. We're gonna drag the triangle from the image container onto the workspace. We can close out of image container. From fits header, triangle, drag it over to the image container until you see the check mark and drop. Now while this is running, uh, keep in mind that if you have filter designation issues on one set of frames, such as the flats here, chances are you have filter designation issues on the corresponding light frames. So make sure that if you find a filter designation issue, you check both the flat frames and the corresponding light frames. And if anything else is tied to that filter name, they will more than likely need to be changed as well. So just make sure to check that and be thorough. 
And as you can see, it doesn't take much time to run at all. Now, it is very, very important to understand that if you have issues with your exposure time, gain, or offset, this process will not fix that. Unfortunately, that is a scenario that you will need to retake your images. Let's go ahead and exit out. And from here, let's open up our folder. Let's go to this PC. And let's go to um, our M101, Luminance, Night 1. Let's delete the old flats. We'll go back to our corrected LUM flat. Let's copy the folder with our good flat frames. And then let's head back into Luminance, Night 1, and paste in our good flat frames. We'll exit out. Go back into script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. We'll go to directory. And we're going to choose M101. And we'll load up the entire data set again. And then when we click OK, Now under flats, we can see that everything that was categorized as one is now included with the filter category of L. So I hope that you found this useful. And if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider a Hidden Light Photography membership. Your support really helps me create more content just for you. And there's lots of perks in it for you as well. Also, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Do you have any questions or have you run into this before? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.